JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May 7th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar continued trading higher against all but two of the other registered currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained the most versus the pound, the Canadian dollar and the Kiwi in that order while it underperformed only against the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, NOC. The strengthening of the dollar and the, uh, the, str the strengthening of the dollar and the yen suggests uh, that uh, risk appetite was dented yesterday. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, uh, we can see that all but one of the major EU indices slid slightly more than one uh, percent, with the exception being UK's FTSE 100, which gained 0.07 percent. It seems that after the German uh, Constitutional Court uh, gave the ECB three months to justify its bond purchases. European investors uh, rem remain concerned with the EU Commission GDP forecasts adding additional pressure. The Commission said that uh, the euro area economy could contract by a record of 7.7% this year. The FTSE was the sole gainer perhaps due to the pound's weakness. Remember that many companies of the index generate profits in other currencies, so in a weakening uh, pound environment those profit worth more in pound terms. The British currency may have come under strong selling interest after the UK construction PMI for April showed that uh, the sector suffered its biggest contraction in history. Uh, the PMI collapsed to 8.2 from 39.3 in March, a fall more than twice as large as, uh, as the previous month. The negative sentiment uh, rolled over into the US session as well with uh, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 losing 0.91 and 0.70% respectively. Only Nasdaq gained 0.51% aided by the continuous rally in uh, tech stocks. What may have extended uh, the risk aversion into the US session may have been remarks by US President Trump who said that he would be able to report whether China is fulfilling its trade obligations in, in around a week or two, adding to worries over whether the world's two largest economies can eventually find common ground on the trade front. The fact that the ADP revealed that 20.2 million job losses may have also been a negative. Investors' morale improved somewhat during the Asian morning today, perhaps due to the much better than expected trade data from China. The data showed that the nation's surplus rose to $45.34 billion in April from $19.93 billion in uh, March, with exports expanding 3.5% year over year instead of tumbling 15.7% as uh, the forecast suggested. That said, Asian bourses failed to sustain gains, even though on its first trading day after Friday, Japan's uh, Nikkei gained 0.28%, China's Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng lost 0.13% and 0.62% respectively. As uh, for today, market participants may, for another week, pay extra attention to the U.S. initial jobless claims. Expectations are for another jump in people signing uh, for unemployment benefits from their for their first time. Specifically, expectations are for a 3 million new claims, with continuing claims expected to have hit 19.9 million. Such a jump may serve another round of risk aversion, meaning lower equities and higher safe havens, but bearing in mind that the financial community has already been digesting the economic wounds from the fast spreading of the coronavirus, we don't expect the reaction to be a long-lasting one. We stick to our guns that, um, 
that with governments around the globe easing their lockdown measures and with a potential vaccine perhaps being ready for distribution soon, risk sentiment could rebound again in the following days, if not today. That said, we have uh, to repeat that uh, this is conditioned upon, uh, upon no new negative headlines surrounding the US-China trade saga and uh, no raising restrictive barriers too early. The pound was the main uh, loser among the G10s and as we already noted, the reason may have been the tumble in the construction PMI. Today, during the early European morning, we had a Bank of England decision with the bank keeping its monetary policy unchanged. Via unanimous vote, officials kept interest rates on hold at 0.10%, while with regards to their QE program, the vote was 7 to 2 in favour of keeping the amount of purchases unchanged. The two dissenters, Sanders and Haskell, preferred to increase the target of the stock uh, of asset purchases by an additional of uh, 100 billion pounds. In the accompanying statement, the bank noted that the existing stance of monetary policy remains appropriate and that uh, they will continue to monitor the situation closely and consistent with their remit, they stand ready to take further action if needed. The pound reacted positively at the time of the announcement, perhaps uh, as there was uh, market speculation that the bank may increase its QE purchases target at this uh, gathering. That said, the two descenders, the overall readiness of the bank to its further if needed, and the fact that in the statement officials noted that, uh, that they car the current uh, QE is to reach its target at the beginning of July, suggest that more action may be on the cards for the months to come. So further easing may prove positive for the UK's uh, stock market and negative for the pound. For now though, investors may turn their gaze uh, to the quarterly inflation report and the minutes uh, uh, Excuse me, may turn their gaze to the quarterly inflation report, the minutes, and the first press conference by the new governor, Andrew Bailey, all scheduled later, later in the day. They may be eager to find out uh, the, policy make, uh, the policymakers' view on how hard the UK economy was hit from the virus spreading and how long it will take before a recovery, a recovery starts. They may also listen to the governor very closely in order to figure out how soon further stimulus could be introduced. If the forecasts uh, paint an ugly picture and uh, Bailey hints that further, uh, that further action may come as soon as at the next gathering, the pound may give back its uh, decision-related uh, gains. Having said uh, all that, uh, the currency's overall, uh, overall, um, overall faith may depend on developments surrounding the Brexit sequel, which has been overshadowed uh, by the pandemic. As soon as the virus situation eases, market participants may well turn their gaze back to Brexit and with Prime Minister Johnson insisting to the December deadline for the transition period, it seems that uh, the, the currency could be poised for a, for a bumpy ride. Now, as for the rest of today's events, besides the US jobless claims and the Bank of England inflation report, the only other release worth mentioning is Canada's IV PMI for April, which is expected to have slid to 25 from 26. As for tonight, during the Asian Morning Friday, Japan's household spending for March is expected to have slid 4% month over month after rising 0.8%. Uh, the RBA's quarterly monetary policy statement is also coming out. The report includes the RBA's updated economic projections. With regards to the speakers, apart from uh, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey, we have another one on today's agenda and this is Philadelphia Fed President Patrick Harker. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in uh, learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.